This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance. I'm an attorney who has retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant and expert witness, an author and producer of these videos. Today I'd like to talk about the National Flood Insurance Program. Since floods are risks of loss seldom covered by typical property insurance policies, the U.S. Congress stepped in and created the National Flood Insurance Program, which is a separate flood insurance policy necessary to protect against the risk of loss by flood that would not be covered by your typical homeowner's or commercial property policy. The National Flood Insurance Act of 1968 created the National Flood Insurance Program, the NFIP, to provide affordable flood insurance on fair terms. FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is the federal agency that implements the National Flood Insurance Program a federal program that enables property owners in participating communities to purchase insurance protection administered by the government against losses from flooding. In order to participate in the NFIP, communities are required to adopt and enforce floodplain management ordinances to reduce future flood damage. Through this program, FEMA has created maps, known as FIRMSs, which delineate the boundaries within a community of flood hazard areas. The firms are divided into insurance risk zones according to the likelihood of a flood occurring within a particular region. The Federal Treasury ultimately makes payments on the flood insurance claims. The flood insurance claim process requires the insured to notify the insurer of the loss and submit a complete signed and sworn proof of loss setting out the nature, cause, and value of the loss. Failure to comply with the letter of the law and the flood insurance policy deprives the insured of the right to receive indemnity to recover from flood damages. This is different from commercially issued policies where courts have limited denial for failure to comply with some of these conditions to a finding of prejudice to the insurer. No such prejudice requirement exists for flood insurance claims. Although a court can empathize with the plight of an NFIP policyholder who fails to comply with the strict conditions stated in the policy, nevertheless, a policy of insurance issued pursuant to a federal program must be strictly construed and enforced because insurance companies act as fiscal agents of the government under the NFIP, all policy awards deplete federally allocated funds. Accordingly, not even the temptations of a hard case will provide a basis for ordering recovery contrary to the terms of a regulation for to do so would disregard the duty of all courts to observe the conditions defined by Congress for charging the public treasury. The NFIP is not the same as a commercial insurance company. Every claim is paid eventually and only by the U.S. Treasury. Therefore, federal courts are obligated to strictly construe NFIP policies as required by the NFIP statutes. Since the NFIP policy is also a type of insurance, the insured is required to deal fairly and in good faith with the insurer and the U.S. government. 
In Anthony Migliaro versus Fidelity National Indemnity Insurance Company, a Third Circuit decision from 2018, the Third Circuit was asked whether the rejection of a policyholder's proof of loss constituted a written denial of all or part of the claim. The trial court found the denial triggered the one-year private limitation of action that is set forth in every standard flood insurance policy, and if so, whether a suit filed two years after the letter could be maintained. After receiving a payment from Fidelity National Indemnity Insurance Company based on an adjuster's assessment of the damage to his property caused by Hurricane Sandy, Anthony Migliaro submitted a sworn proof of loss seeking additional compensation. Fidelity sent Migliaro a letter rejecting his proof of loss, and he filed suit. The district court found that the letter rejecting Migliaro's proof of loss was a written denial of all or part of the claim. Since Migliaro filed his complaint almost two years after he received the letter, the district court dismissed the suit as time-barred. Congress authorized the creation of the NFIP to enable, to enable interested persons to purchase insurance against loss resulting from physical damage to or loss of property arising from any flood occurring in the United States. The National Flood Insurance System is an unusual hybrid of government and private insurance, but it is essentially a government program. Write Your Own, or WYO, carriers act as fiscal agents of the United States. Standard flood insurance program policyholders pay premiums to WYO carriers and WYO carriers service the policies. However, however, the United States government ultimately pays all flood claims issued under the program. Because standard flood insurance policy claims are ultimately paid by the United States government, all standard flood insurance policies must be identical to the form codified at 44 CFR page 61, Appendix A1. With regard to Migliaro's claim, every SFIP provides, quote, you may not sue us to recover mon money under this policy unless you have complied with all of the requirements of the policy. If you do sue, you must start the suit within one year after the date of the written denial of all or part of the claim. This requirement applies to any claim that you may have under this policy and to any dispute that you may have arising out of the handling of any claim under the policy. Close quote. The issue before the court was whether Fidelity's rejection of Migliaro's proof of loss constituted a written denial of all or part of the claim, thereby triggering the SFIP's one-year limitation period. Migliaro urged he did not accept the rejection as a denial of his claim. However, in so arguing, Migliaro necessarily admits that he viewed the July 15, 2013 letter rejecting his proof of loss as a written denial of his claim. This is because the private right of action against a WYO carrier is limited to a suit challenging the complete or partial denial of his claim. Therefore, the very act of bringing suit signaled that to Migliaro's mind, his claim had been denied. So when Congress created the NFIP, its authorization of policyholders to sue FEMA upon disallowance of their claims 
constituted a limited waiver of the sovereign immunity typically enjoyed by the federal agency. An appellate court cannot, should not, and will not enlarge the waiver beyond what the language requires. Under the WYO program, WYO carriers stand in FEMA's shoes for litigation purposes. Because a suit against a WYO company is the functional equivalent of a suit against FEMA, an SFIP policyholder may only bring suit against the WYO carrier as authorized by the standard flood insurance policy. Because flood losses, whether insured by FEMA or by a participating WYO insurer, are paid out of the United States Treasury. A claimant under a standard flood insurance policy must comply strictly, strictly with the terms and conditions that Congress established for payment. Because a policyholder cannot bring suit until his claim has been denied in writing, Migliaro must have accepted that this had occurred when he brought suit. The only writing in the record that Migliaro could have construed as a denial of his claim was the July 15, 2013 letter rejecting his proof of loss. Thus, by bringing suit, Migliaro acknowledged that the letter constituted a written denial of his claim or he'd have no right to file suit because Migliaro's complaint was filed almost two years after he received the July 15, 2013 letter, his suit was properly dismissed as time-barred. Since the statute only allows suit after a claim is denied, the filing of suit was an admission that his claim had been denied. Since he filed two years after the letter, the suit was time-barred. Had he simply provided fidelity with evidence of additional damage not covered by the initial assessment, that claim would have been considered or denied, and he could have sued within a year of a detailed denial or could have had his supplement paid. Failing to treat fidelity fairly by improving his claim, Migliaro destroyed his own claim. Because the claim is paid by the government, the requirement that the late-filed suit be prejudicial to the insured does not apply to NFP claims. National flood insurance policies are not really insurance policies. They are a gift provided by the United States to people who live where there is a potential of flood damage. And they can pay for this gift to provide them with some type of indemnity in the case of a flood, but only if they comply strictly with the conditions set forth by the United States Congress, and any failure to comply with the conditions, whether it is a condition requiring a proof of loss, or a condition requiring a prompt notice, or a condition requiring a proof of loss signed and sworn to by the insured, failure totally deprives the insured of the right to recovery. If the policy had been written not by a WYO or by FEMA, but by an independent insurance company who decided to take the flood risk without the help of the U.S. government, then the requirement that a late-filed suit be prejudicial could apply. So if there is available commercial flood insurance, it is always best for the rights of the insured to buy from the commercially available insurer and not from the government 
who will strictly construe every word in the standard flood insurance policy. This video was adapted from my book, Zelma on Insurance Claims, Volume 1, Second Edition, which is part of a 10-part treatise uh, called Zelma on Insurance Claims, available as both a Kindle book and as a paperback from Amazon.com. If you found this video to be useful, please refer it to your colleagues. It's free. And please also subscribe and follow me at my YouTube channel and my Rumble channel and at my blog so you can be advised of future blog postings and videos. Thank you for your attention.